It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So high right now. Anything's possible. Oh, my mama. Oh, my mama. Lady, ma. Anything's possible. Rain and Jay's back with the vengeance. Back. All the real Celtics fans in attendance. Ooh. This is the truth like 34. Yeah. This like walking in the garden when you hear the roars. Crowd goes crazy. Most in depth coverage on the daily, mainly podcast royalty, the content kings. When you talk about the franchise with 17 rings, focus like Danny at the deadline. Global with it, got a local feel like the red line, the blue line, the green line. Play it in between time. I'ma throw my C's jersey on in the meantime and press play. When the F's done, I can't wait until the next day. Trying to stay in tune with the C's, that's the best way. Melly. Hey there, welcome back to the Locked On Celtics podcast. I want to thank you for making this show part of your daily routine. Whatever it is that you're doing right now, listening to the podcast, watching the podcast on YouTube, I am very happy that you have included this podcast and me in your routine as you enjoy the Boston Celtics. I'm John Corrales. I cover the Boston Celtics for Boston Sports Journal, and I am the author of the Boston Celtics All-Time All-Stars, a book that you're seeing right now on YouTube. It is available wherever books are sold and a signed copy, personalized copy on my website, johncorrales.com, is uh, $30. So please pick one up. Today, I'm talking a lot more about Marcus Smart because no matter what happens, no matter what we do, no matter what Q&A I do, I keep getting a lot of Marcus Smart questions. And Ime Odoka on 98.5 The Sports Hub was asked a Marcus Smart question. Uh, specifically, is he one of the pillars of this team? You talk about Jason Brown, J- Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown being pillars of this team. Is Marcus Smart a pillar of this team? And, and people just keep throwing these trade ideas at me. I want to definitively address all of this Marcus Smart stuff, which I'm going to do in the first two segments. And then later on, an idea for the stretch four that came up today that I'm kind of into. So... All of that is going to be coming up momentarily. Today's episode is brought to you by Michelob Ultra at only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Stay tuned for the Ultra Moment segment coming up later in this episode. Let's start with Ime Odoka talking about Marcus Smart, who said uh, he has that edge and toughness about him. The things he brings to your team are things you'd love every player to bring. You hate playing against him. You want him on your side. So he's another foundational piece. He's been there through thick and thin. He's seen the winning and seen some downtimes. What he does for Jason and Jalen is invaluable in my eyes. Now, pretty definitive stuff there from Ime Udoka, who is talking on 98.5's Zolak and Bertrand. This is from a couple of days ago at this point, but Marcus Smart is one of the most um, I don't want to say polarizing because I don't want to, I don't want to give too much credit to a vocal minority. There are certain people here. I see it in the YouTube comments, which thank you for the comments, but I disagree with some of these trademark of smart ones, which are, I'm sure are going to be inevitable. Um, on Twitter, uh, on Boston sports journal, I get the, everywhere people can make a comment. There is a, a vocal minority that is all about, Hey, I've had enough of Marcus Smart. Udoka seems to disagree as well. And frankly, I think that a lot of people who disagree are people who are close to this team and see the different things that he brings. And the people who want him gone almost invariably focus on his shooting. So I want to be as clear as possible here that there are a number of reasons why the Celtics shouldn't trade Marcus Smart. And I'm going to get into those in the next segment. But the people around the Boston Celtics highly value Marcus Smart. Is he untouchable? No, he's not untouchable in a trade. Is he valued pretty highly? Yeah, he's valued pretty highly. So these suggestions that Marcus Smart and Romeo Langford go for a different point guard have got to stop. It's got to stop. I know you don't like Marcus Smart, and I'm not telling you to like Marcus Smart. Please hear me when I say this. I'm not telling you that you have to like Marcus Smart. I'm not telling you that you have to be happy about how he plays. 
I'm telling you that your idea of for Marcus Smart and a young player for Malcolm Brogdon or somebody else is a no-go. It's a non-starter. It's not going to happen. So forget it. Forget it. Accept the reality that Marcus Smart is highly valued by the Boston Celtics, very, very clearly highly valued by Ime Udoka, Udoka, and very clearly highly valued by Brad Stevens. What are the trade scenarios? Again, next segment. Marcus Smart is going to stick around, and I think Marcus Smart is going to be the starting point guard, and I think Marcus Smart should be the starting point guard. Now, I'm in that camp of Marcus Smart is a a good overall player. Yeah, I know that he has the bad shooting nights. I know that. I see that. I've said this on the podcast before. I'll sum it up. Marcus Smart with some lineup stability as the starting point guard with Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum on either side of him. He's going to have a, a clearer role. I think he's going to have a responsibility for distributing the ball. He's going to know that if I just come down and take a shot, 20 seconds in the shot clock, to and I've got Tatum and Brown on either side of me, that's not going to fly. You know, maybe he'll do it once or twice here or there when he's like on a hot streak and he's going to heat check his, okay, you're going to have to live with that. But every everybody just has to understand that when Marcus Smart is in a consistent role, he's actually pretty good. When he's asked to do one thing, he's actually pretty good. And Marcus Smart as the starting point guard where he's passing and then cutting and then coming back around and catching and shooting, that's fine. That is going to be fine. He's going to have his 0 for 6 from 3 nights. That'll happen. But generally speaking, that's going to be fine. One question well, as, as I bring up uh, Ime Udoka is, is Marcus Smart going to accept the hard coaching that that Udoka is promising. And a question I got on Boston Sports Journal was, do you think he can, Udoka can control Smart's uh, bad shots? The control will come in the form of the consistent role. And yeah, I'm sure there's going to be an opportunity there for Udoka to, to say, hey, that's not the shot that we want. Okay. No matter what you think, that's not the shot that we want. Can Marcus Smart accept hard coaching? Yeah, I think a lot of people have a misconception that a guy who's as intense as Marcus Smart is going to reject someone coming at him with some hard coaching. I think a guy like Smart is going to accept the hard coaching. He he wants that energy. He has that energy. He's he's a hard coaching guy himself. Like he he's out there talking, being demonstrative, telling guys He's not one to mince words. Give him that same energy. Match his energy. And it could get volatile. It could. There's no doubt about it. Blow-ups might happen, but blow-ups happen all the time. And let me tell you something. Udoka's 6'6". He's kind of bigger than Marcus Smart, and he's intense too. And if they go face-to-face, that's going to be a pretty intense moment. But you know what? It'll be out of mutual respect, and that's going to be the key to that that whole relationship. If if two guys go at each other, it's not a problem to me. If a coach and a player in the NBA go at each other, it's not really a big problem to me. As long as there's a foundational relationship there that afterwards they can talk it out. And that's the only that's the only thing that matters. Do you two guys have a relationship where you can talk it out if it blows up? Then that's fine. Push, find that line. Sometimes you have to cross a line to find out where it is. Not all the time, but sometimes you do. And maybe with Marcus Smart, you do. Can he accept that hard coaching? Hell yeah, he can accept that hard coaching. He wants to be pushed. He wants to win. If he sees the results and he knows that that coach has a respect and has his back, then whatever happens between two people on the court, on the practice court, that's fine. That's fine because what's going to happen is afterwards they're going to talk it through. They're going to get to a mutual, mutually agreeable place, and then that'll be it. I think this is going to be a good coach for Smart. I think Udoka is going to be good. He's going to have that that strength, that that matching energy, um, and I think that's going to result in 
some of the better shot selection. Uh, but mostly I think that shot selection is going to be a function of he if he's in a better role, if he's in a better spot, if he can be in that same role all the time, then he can get into a groove of when he's supposed to shoot and not. And every once in a while, if he pops off, some of it you have to live with. Some of it you just have to live with. I hate to tell you, but not every bad shot is going to get a, a, a benching or a yelling or anything like that. 82 damn games. Every once in a while, guy's going to take a bad shot. That's going to happen. Marcus Smart is an all-league defender, and he is, as said by many people, the heart and soul of this team. In the NBA, you can't just bench everybody or have repercussions for every little mistake. After the game, maybe in film session, you can say, hey, that, that's not the shot that we want. And Smart can probably say like, yeah, I gotcha, I gotcha. But you're going to have to live with it so he can do all the other stuff. That's just how it goes with Marcus. Okay? That's that. I think Udoka is going to handle it well. I think Smart is sticking around. Unless, unless, and I'll tell you what that unless is, what kind of trades will include Marcus Smart? I'm going to talk about that. And why? And not just his value to the team, not just who he is and all of that and the heart and soul stuff. Raw numbers, cold numbers, just business and why the stuff that you're suggesting business-wise, flat out, transactional, numbers in a ledger doesn't make sense. Time now for the ultra moment, the Michelob ultra moment, which is uh, a new thing that we're doing here with Michelob Ultra, something that has brought me joy and happiness with Marcus Smart. I'm going to focus on Marcus Smart. And this season is, has not been a quite as much, but my favorite ever Marcus Smart moment. I'm just going to use this to re relive the Marcus Smart moment from last season where he had the, the two games in a row where the ball got stuck up in the uh, uh, up above the basket and he went up with the the broom and poked it free and the second time that he did it he got MVP chance from the crowd and that was such a cool moment and the best moment was afterwards he he said you know he, he took that as this this great sign of how much Boston was behind him he wears a sweatshirt that says I love Boston and Boston loves me you know like that's that tells you everything you need to know about Marcus Smart. That was my favorite moment from Smart ever, like ever. All the dives, all of the crazy snake, the, the cobra attacks and all of that stuff. That moment with the with the broom and the basket and his reaction to it in the locker room. Um, I'm very lucky because that was an exclusive for me. And I got that that real great moment with him. Uh, that, was, that was a lot of fun. Uh, so that's my favorite. That's my Michelob Ultra moment of Marcus Smart's career. Michelob Ultra, uh, if you want to share your own Michelob Ultra moment, you can use hashtag Ultra Moment and share your own moments about Marcus Smart. Uh, you know, it's only worth it if you enjoy it, and I've enjoyed the hell out of Marcus Smart's career. 2.6 carbs, 95 calories, joy creates success, and you can tell that Marcus Smart is enjoying himself out there, but enjoyment isn't the end game. It's the whole game. How many times do you see a player say, we just got to go have fun out there, and I think Marcus Smart has fun on the floor. I think it's a great example to set for this team. I'm going to talk about why he's got to stay around and why your trade idea mm, next. Today on the road to the finals, our NBA playoffs coverage is brought to you by Michelob Ultra. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. And at 2.6 carbs and 95 calories, we can all enjoy the games a little bit more this postseason. And my real moment here is Giannis Antetokounmpo getting injured, but no structural damage. I can't believe that the way someone fell into his knee, that it's still just a hyperextension. No ligament damage, no bone damage, no nothing, no tendon damage. That is amazing to me. Very lucky for the Milwaukee Bucks. Lucky for NBA fans. Uh, I thought that that had the potential to be something that carried into next season. And... That 
is not the case. So even if he misses the rest of this series, even if Milwaukee gets bounced, the fact that he's healthy, that is huge for me. And count your blessings, Milwaukee Bucks fans. People keep asking me about Marcus Smart trades. And it it's the people who don't like Marcus Smart suggest, hey, Marcus Smart for another point guard. Marcus Smart and picks for this. Marcus Smart and a young guy for for this. And it's it's a basically a bunch of people who are saying, we're done with Marcus Smart. We want to trade him. And that's it. Bye. Bye, Marcus. Now, just like I started out in the last segment where I said, it doesn't matter if you enjoy Marcus Smart or not. It doesn't matter if you think that he sucks or not. They're not trading him for nothing. He is sticking around. Get used to it. In this segment, just because you don't like Marcus Smart, it doesn't mean that you waste his contract by trading for fill in whomever you might have been suggested that he get traded for. That's that's the bottom line. The Celtics do not have a lot of contracts that are tradable that combined can get the Celtics to where they need to be for a bigger deal. Let's look at the Celtics situation here. They're not trying to tinker around Tatum and Brown right now. Maybe over the course of the season, it'll become evident that Tatum is, oh yeah, here here comes MVP level Tatum. And oh boy, Jalen Brown is really like, forget about all-star reserve. We're, we might be looking at an all-star starter Jalen Brown. If those two things become true this season, then maybe some tinkering can be the the move and and you see what the rest of the roster looks like who's expendable who's not and all of that stuff but right now the Celtics have as I've explained in, in previous podcasts a short term plan which is this which is let's see how how Tatum and Brown kind of develop let's see what do you really need around these two guys can can these two be your stars and you fill in blanks around them somewhat like um you know, I'll say Denver, but Porter Jr. is coming along. Milwaukee, to a degree, you know, with with Giannis and Chris Middleton. Um, Tatum's not as good as Giannis just yet, uh, but Brown is better than Middleton right now. So, uh, in that in that mold, so that's short term plan. The longer term plan is let's maybe maybe there's a third star out there, whether it's a trade for Bradley Beal, signing somebody in that twenty twenty three free agent class, something like that. There's the bigger plan of get a third star in here, really make sure that, you know, no matter what you think of these other two guys, we're just really going to blow past Brooklyn. If the Celtics are looking to trade for that, that star and everybody is, and Bradley Beal is one of the main targets, but there could be others. You're going to need Marcus Smart. You're going to need his contract. If you're going to try to get this done without using Jalen Brown, which is the goal, right? You're going to see, can Romeo Langford, can Aaron Neesmith, can can Grant Williams, can Peyton Pritchard, all of those guys, can they develop, can they show something this season that when you say, hey, we got a package that was Marcus Smart and all of these young guys that the, you know we and, and a bunch of draft picks, we feel good about getting these, these young guys and the picks and all of that. Now, it's going to be hard for the Celtics to pull this off, but you need this option to be available of $14.3 million that can be aggregated along with some of these other contracts to get close enough to match the salaries. You need that because if you trade Marcus Smart for somebody else, a Malcolm Brogdon, who, I'm sorry, is not quite as desirable in trade talks and makes more money. You're, you're giving away an asset. Forget about the player. Just forget about the player for a moment. Financially money wise, the, the transactional need for $14.3 million 
to use in a trade to combine with Robert Williams and Aaron Neesmith, who combined make 7.2. Marcus Smart makes 14.3. That's 21.5. That gets you close. That gets you that gets you to a place where, all right, now, now we're getting into salary matching territory. What what do we need to do? What do we need to add to to that 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 can get the Celtics close? And maybe that's why Tristan Thompson sticks around as just salary ballast. But to aggregate salaries, you got a guy like Marcus Smart who defensively is a culture builder. Okay. He is a culture builder. That's a guy who's intense. He's you know de facto captain of this team. If you say, well, he makes a little bit much for what he does offensively, but getting this guy in can really help the character of our team, that's acceptable to a team. But that $14.3 million has to be available to the Celtics to move in a bigger deal so they can aggregate something. Even if, even if Jalen Brown is going out, you can at least say, hey, Brown and Smart get you everywhere you need to be. You can save your draft picks. You can save the, the role players. You can say, Jalen Brown, Marcus Smart, first round pick. There you go. And that gets you past where you need to be financially, but it saves you Langford and Neesmith and Robert Williams and those guys. And it saves you six years of picks. There are different ways to build these trades where Marcus Smart's contract alone is necessary. That helps. So don't just say Marcus Smart plus this guy for Malcolm Brogdon. Don't. Because that doesn't get the Celtics appreciably better. And it takes away a contract that is, is necessary to make the other team say, wow, we're getting that guy too? All right, because I don't think Jalen Brown and Malcolm Brogdon are moving the needle. Okay, it's just not. I don't think it's. I don't think I shouldn't say not moving the needle. I don't think Malcolm Brogdon is as desirable in a trade as Marcus Smart is, considering the money that Brogdon makes six or seven more million dollars than Smart does. So, from a purely numbers transactional thing, please understand that it's better to keep Marcus Smart around for this season and see what's available at the trade deadline, and then figure it out. Don't start saying smart for this spare part or somewhat equal type of player just because that guy shoots a little bit better. Team building. It's about the team building. Speaking of which, I'm going to come up with a different suggestion that came up today for that stretch four position. We'll see how that goes. First, Rock Auto is the place to go for whatever you need for your car with all of those different makes and models out there. It's just impossible for your chain store to keep all of the stuff in stock that you need, right? There's how many different cars, how many different makes, how many different models, and you're going to go into that little chain store in that corner of that strip mall, and they're going to have, you think, everything that you need for your car? No, but Rock Auto does. And not only that, they have it at a price that is much more affordable. You're saving time. You're saving money. In fact, you're saving up to 30, 50, even 100% on the same parts that are at those chain stores or dealerships. Rock Auto is a family business. They've been serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years, and they're not going to change the price if you're a pro or do-it-yourselfer. They're not going to change the price based on what the market will bear. That's not how Rock Auto does business. Go check it out. Their website is very, very easy to use. Their catalog is expansive and it has everything you need from complicated to simple. Do you just need wipers? Do you just need floor mats? That's all there too, okay? It doesn't have to be some complicated engine part. Go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts that are available for your car or truck. And when you do buy something, and I'm pretty sure that you will, write locked on in their how did you hear about us box. That's how they know we sent you. If you write locked on in there, how did you hear about us box? It's an amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need at rockauto.com. Get ready for some awesome draft coverage on the Locked On Podcast Network starting July 19th. It's the Ultimate Mock Draft 2021 presented by Locked On in Odyssey. 
features analysis from the GOAT, Chad Ford of NBA Mock Drafts, plus Scal, Brian Scalabrini, Ryan McDonough, formerly of the Celtics front office and Phoenix general manager, plus locked on NBA local experts making selections, picks, trades, all of it throughout the entire week, all week long. We're doing all 30 picks. Maybe I'll be able to trade into the first round as the Boston Celtics. Maybe I'll do what Brad Stevens will probably do and just kick back with some popcorn. I'm going to listen. You should too. The Ultimate Mock Draft. Search for Ultimate Mock Draft 2021 on the new Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. Odyssey is your audio home for all the sports, podcast, music, and news that matters to you. That's A-U-D-A-C-Y. One thing the Celtics have at their disposal is the $11 million remainder of the Gordon Hayward traded player exception. So when we think about the moves that Brad Stevens is going to make this offseason, he's already traded Kemba Walker. He's already hired the head coach. What's left? He's got just about $6 million to spend on the taxpayer mid-level. That's going to be, I don't know, that's going to be a, a, I don't know, TJ McConnell type. I'm looking at maybe Chris Dunn as maybe you use that to get your your backup point guard or a third point guard, a bigger point guard even, to kind of throw into the backcourt. So in case you need some extra size and Peyton Pritchard isn't cutting it, you've got somebody there. but. So that's one element. The other element is is all of the traded player exceptions. The the one I talked about with Hayward. There's uh, the five million um, Daniel Tice. There's one for nine million dollars. I think that was created with Kemba Walker. That's going to last all season long, so you don't have to waste that right now. Um, the Celtics have a hole at the forward spot that they can try to fill either. Now, maybe maybe Al Horford is a guy that can step into that. I don't particularly think so, but maybe Ime Udoka can find a way to make that work. He did coach, he did coach Al Horford in Philly. He saw what didn't make that work. Maybe he has some ideas of what will. Otherwise, you got to scan the league and you got to figure out what guys are out there making less than a million dollars, eleven million dollars. And fit into this, what team would be willing to let this guy go? What situation is out there that you say, well, a guy leaving for nothing and a team taking back a draft pick, a low draft pick, a second round pick, Where, when does that make sense? How does that make sense? Well, I've settled on Jermichael Green as a potential candidate for that traded player exception. Now he's 6'8", he, so he's a stretch four. He's 31, so he's a little older. And last season was kind of, eh, okay for the Denver Nuggets. Had some really good games, had some not so good games. Shot 40% from three and uh, has played good defense in the past, was okay but not great defensively last year. Seems like he can fit a role. So you say, all right, 6'8 guy who shoots threes. Why would the Denver Nuggets let him go? Why would they participate in this? Well, Jermichael Green's salary for this upcoming season is $7.5 million, and it's a player option. And here's where it gets a little tricky. If he likes playing in Denver and that's going to be his market value, then You opt in, you say, hey, I'm going to stick around in Denver. I got Jokic, got Murray coming back. Porter's looking good. I can fill a role here. Depends on what happens otherwise around the fringes. Maybe he has a role. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he doesn't feel like he's getting the right opportunity. Maybe he wants a longer-term deal, and Denver says, ah, we're not going to give it to you. I went to Denver Stiffs, who wrote, Green's offseason is going to be a very interesting one. He might be able to get $7 million million per in the open market, but he could could just as easily opt into his player option for next season. He just turned 31 and he could be looking for one last multi-year payday in free agency. There are some teams with money available this off season that could tempt him to look elsewhere. So if there's a lot of ifs, if Denver is, is not into the long-term deal here, which would be what two, three years. If, he says, all right, well, I'm going to start exploring my options. 
but the market is still somewhere around seven to eight million dollars. If the Celtics can find a way, say, hey, Jamichael, look, you want out of Denver, and you go to Denver and you say, look, I'm going to leave if you don't, I'm going to opt in and you trade me to Boston for the second round pick. That's option one for you guys. If you don't want to do that, then I'm just going to leave for nothing. And I'm going to go somewhere else because I've got a deal on the table with my second choice, pick a team, whatever that is. This could be a situation where Boston says, look, opt in, play the season for us. We're going to, by trading for you, we're taking, we're trading for your, your bird rights. And then at the end of the season, when things sort out, he can, the Celtics can maybe re-sign him for another year or two or whatever, however that works out. When you're looking at the imperfect choices around the league, a guy like Jermichael Green suddenly makes a little bit more sense because he could around Tatum and Brown and, you know, smart at the point guard and all the other, you know, uh, Robert Williams or Al Horford or whomever on a good, on a good team, which he was on a good team, but a, a good team that's constructed a little differently with more of its firepower coming on the wings. You have a possibility here of a role. Plus also the, the, that stretch four position is kind of wide open on the Celtics. And maybe Grant Williams can step into that, but he's a little smaller and he can do that off the bench, maybe, or he can be the small ball five, as we've talked about. But the role is kind of there. It's kind of, if the Celtics are looking for a, a guy to just step in and, you know, Jermichael Green played 19 minutes, which is perfect. You play him about 20 minutes or so. You can, you can start him. You can have him come off the bench depending on what you do with Evan Fournier. But using that traded player exception to bring him in, then you flip Tristan Thompson into somebody's cap space or something to to clear a little bit of that tax room so you're not paying $14 million for Jermichael Green, which would be crazy. But situation seems right. You've got the hole, the opportunity in Boston. Hell, maybe he could become a starter in Boston for all we know. Possibly. You've got a team that could lose him for nothing, but if the Celtics say, hey, here's a second-round pick, they say, all right, fine. We'll take second-round picks. Everybody can use a second-round pick. Even if you use a second-round pick to attach to somebody or a draft and stash, you don't don't throw those away. But the Celtics would be like, hey, yeah, second-round pick for Jermichael Green. We'll do it. Bring him in. A little bit of depth at that four. Just an idea. You can tell me if I'm crazy at Reds Army underscore John on Twitter, but it popped up during my Boston Sports Journal regular Wednesday Q&A session, which I do with subscribers on Boston Sports Journal. I thought it would be a great segment here. Tell me what you think. Also, tell me what you think about the show by leaving a comment uh, underneath the YouTube video. Lots of people subscribing to the YouTube channel. It's growing pretty quickly. I'm very appreciative of that. Uh, You can... Subscribe to the YouTube uh, videos. You can subscribe on your regular podcast app if you continue to listen to the podcast every morning on your way to work or during lunch or wherever, however you listen to your podcast. Thank you very, very much. However you consume the show, I'm very, very appreciative that you continue to do so. And of course, share the podcast. That's a very important thing. Tell your friends that they should be listening to and watching the Locked On Celtics podcast here on the Locked On Podcast Network.